Hi, here we are again with Ed and Maya Scopel of Itall Acres. Hey, all right. So here down we see our giant golden timber bamboo. This area here we come in, this was an old burn pile. You see a burn pile we have currently going. This was an old one. The burn piles that we have after we burn, we like to reclaim that land and plant certain herbs in, those, in that recently cleared burnt area. So in here we have a whole host of medicinals. We have comfrey, we have official hyssop, we have the amazing viper's bug loss, we have wormwood, we have echinacea, we've got oregano, there's some elecampane in the back, there's red clover, there's some, uh, what are they, brown-eyed Susans back there. Um, so again, you can see the diversity. We would call this uh, a, a medicinal plant guild or plant community the different plants growing together in harmony. Um, we have an evening primrose that we had talked about during the thing coming up here. So many, many, many different medicinal plants. This is comfrey, which we had talked about. Uh, not only is it beautiful, but has many uses in the garden, permaculture-wise, from fertilizing your plants to keeping down weeds, and then all of the medicinal uses. You want to talk about that, Maya? So the leaves, and generally, okay, so there's many different uses for the plant. You let it flower for a little bit of time, and then these flowering stalks you cut, and you can give to other plants as fertilizer. You can just lay it, lay it around. Then the plant will start growing uh, basal leaves again. Um, you harvest the leaves and then you you dry them so you don't want to harvest too many at once so it's not too overwhelming because the leaves the leaves are quite big and they can be quite a bit bigger than this and they can be abrasive yeah you can use it in a poultice um fresh but generally you want to dry the comfrey to use it you or can... if you use it fresh you steam it if you take these leaves inside and steam them over a pot of boiling water and and it makes them more pliable it'll get rid of the rough coating and then you can wrap them around whatever injury you might have to get to apply a, a poultice that way. We can also extract it in oil. You can also make a tincture. There is some, you know, concern in the in the in the FDA world about mainly we use comfrey externally. It can be and has a great use internally. There's some some you know what do you call it uh, about pyrolyzidine alkaloids and poisoning the liver and some at certain uses at certain levels and certain things and then it matters whether you use the root or the leaf the root has that the the pyrol they just call them PAs for short um, more and higher concentration in the root but the plant is amazing um, again completely put around for fertilizing externally completely safe to use externally it, it like you said it regenerates cell growth and division um, it's so it, it really encourages for, for broken bones, for sprains, for um, blunt force trauma, these sorts of things. This is an amazing plant to have. It is called bone, I mean, um, comfrey or knit bone was another name for it um, in that with broken bones, it helps knit the bones back together, not only from its use as externally as an oil or a poultice, but internally taken as well. Internally, it's not helped with that as well. Um, you see mullen back here. This is a this is a mullen stalk, an evening primrose stalk, echin, uh, echinacea, elecampane. Um, there's oregano back in here. This is regular garden oregano. All of this tall, shiny one, silvery. That's wormwood. Um, so, what do you use wormwood for? So, wormwood is uh, one of the supreme bitter plants. It is used commercially in the production of absinthe and other um, alcoholic bitters um, but mainly people use it uh, you want to use it hardly ever use it fresh mainly you want to use it dried because it can be a central nervous system convulsant because it has a high concentration of a compound called thujone um, which in drying that compound is greatly reduced so it makes it much safer. This is one of those herbs where sometimes you have to know what you're doing where you should know that using it fresh can be uh, can present some issues with especially with sensitive individuals, but using it fried uh, dried greatly reduces that. So you can harvest it in early flower. And this like is about ready to harvest here, just now. And just dry it. You can dry the whole stalk, and then it was used to improve digestion, to tonify the stomach, and it's called wormwood. Its number one use was worming, whether exactly. it be for pets it's or people. A deworming agent. Parasitic. 
Um, it's very pretty. We like the way it looks. I love here. the way it smells. It has a great smell. Other people are opposed to it. And we it found doesn't. that the easiest way to maintain a, lar a space like this without the weeds taking over is to grow big, bushy type of plants like this. And so yeah, these herbs naturally suppress the weeds. So in other places where you plant herbs, it's a big deal in, in keeping the weeds out, especially early on in their cultivation. Um, but these ones, they grow big, fast. This is, a, this is actually a, a technique in permaculture for, for suppressing weeds in, in different gardens, is to allow to plant comfrey in large rows alongside of some of your annual vegetable crops. They'll get big, they'll flop over, then it'll snuff out any weeds coming up on the side. Then you can also chop that, that sits right there and goes, Comfrey is one of those biodynamic accumulators, meaning it brings up nutrients from deep in the soil and holds them in the plant. That's why we cut that plant, we give it around to our fruit trees, let it just sit there around it and it'll go in. We also then take this and make, she makes a, a, a compost tea out of it that then we can use as a foliar spray. Um, but comfrey leaf, because the whole plant here is, is one of the main ingredients in that um, compost tea. I feel like we could spend an hour here. <laughs> right? Thanks for this, Maya and Ed. Thank you.